Hello and welcome. Welcome to this Magica Voxel introduction. Um, this is a short series of videos that basically will cover some of the um, tools and um, workflows within Magica Voxel. Magica Voxel, it's, uh, it, it's a very friendly way to get into 3D graphics. Um, the, what it's really interesting about Magic of Voxel in particular is that it works with voxels. And um, a voxel, it's like a very tiny cube uh, that it's the building block of the images. One common uh, analogy that it's made is that the voxel is for the voxel image. Um, is doing for the voxel image or the 3D image the same that the pixel is doing for the 2D image. A pixel being a square, a flat 2D square. Uh, so we're going to start by looking at things like uh, the Magica Voxel interface and getting to know the tools and the work areas a little bit. Uh, but first, I just want to show you some examples of the work that it's done typically uh, within Magica Voxel and the UI itself. Um, one of the greatest things about Magica Voxel is, well, besides the fact that it's super friendly and it's easy to learn, uh, is that it also has a beautiful render engine. So it's really easy to get really nice looking renders from it. Um, in it, you can do all sorts of things from very simple um, types of characters and scenes and different types of models that look very blocky, very voxel-like, which is really charming uh, to things that are uh, more complex. And it's a tool that it's uh, very well suited for game uh, design and it's actually capable of uh, integrating into game engines like Unity and um, Unreal. But this, that's not the only thing you can do with it. Uh, you are actually able to export it into other 3D modeling tools like Blender, for instance. Uh, you can also do 3D printing with it. Uh, so it's quite exciting. It's a nice place to start if you are beginning to get into um, 3D graphics. Um, another interesting area for this tool is also its integration into virtual reality, augmented reality, and I guess all of the spectrum of uh, mixed realities. You can integrate it into um, WebGL, uh, so you have it in a, um, maybe a, uh, in a, running in a browser, in a web platform. Um, you can have it uh, as part of your A-frame project, which is a form of uh, web VR uh, type of application. So um, this is the beginning of the first episode. Now let's jump right into Magic of Oxo and take a look at the interface to get a sense of how it works in there. Okay, so now we are in Magic of Oxo and I'm going to be showing you some of the main aspects of the interface. Uh, usually when you open the program, this is what you see. Uh, you see this uh, big um, blue cube. And uh, the main, uh, I guess, the main three areas, uh, the three main areas. Uh, the main area that you see right in front of you where the cube is, that's the work area. And that's where you're going to be doing all of your work uh, and visualization. To the left, we have the palette area and the brush area for color settings and uh, brush settings. And to the right, we have the edit and project area. Usually what, what I do when I get here is um, I delete um, the cube itself. So I start with an empty scene space. And I like to look at this as a space. It's a gridded space um, that has a size to it, a three-dimensional size. And you, you can get a sense of what the size is by looking at these numbers on the top right. So right now I have 40 on the X axis, 40 on the Y axis, and 40 on the Z axis. And 40 stands for 
the number of voxels. Um, under brush, we have uh, ways to actually set um, or adjust this visualization. I have things like uh, BO that stands for displaying background objects or not. I have the possibility of seeing edges in my models. I have this grid. Um, I have uh, the pos uh, I can see the wireframes. Uh, I can see the frames on this grid. So every 10 uh, squares, I see that uh, thicker line. I also can see shadows uh, in my visualization here. Now, looking at the, the right area, which is the project area, well, this is uh, where you're going to be doing things like uh, opening a document. Using this button, you can open a document. It, can, it also uses a lot of the same uh, shortcuts, uh, standard shortcuts. So for opening a document, that would be Command-O. So I can open a document through the shortcut as well. Uh, I can save the whatever I'm working on. I can also save as. Uh, I can create a new document. I can duplicate my project. I can also um, delete or eliminate my project. Now, as we look at the project panel itself, we'll see that uh, it comes with several different pre-made projects. When you, when you download Magicka Voxel, you'll see these inside the Vox folder, and that's what we're looking at here. This is basically what I have inside my Vox folder. So I have some pre-made things. Um, what I like to do is actually to create, and this is my own workflow, but I like to create a folder in there. So what you see here at the top that says My Models, this is a folder I have created for my work, and that's inside, again, the Vox folder, uh, which is part of the download um, from GitHub. So you just go in there, and then you can make a folder for your own stuff, or you can actually save your projects in that folder. Um, right next to the project area, we have the, and this is where basically we are doing file management stuff, right? So uh, right next to it, we have the edit area. And right now I'm looking at all of the editing tools here. And one thing that it's, I think, uh, useful to do, it's actually to just open them up, all of them. Um, so you'll, you'll have tools for um, model manipulation or image manipulation here. Uh, for instance, rotation. You can rotate a model. Uh, you can flip a model. You can loop a model. Uh, you can scale a model. You can shear a model. Uh, you can repeat it as well. You can mirror, which is very useful. Uh, for a lot of modeling projects. Uh, you can use specific shapes, like very quickly create an ellipse, for instance, um, or a pyramid, or a maze. Uh, you can also use uh, this panel here to modify a model. Uh, hulling, it's a pretty common um, option, for instance, because these models, they are filled with voxels uh, once you create them, but you can, by choosing whole, you can make them uh, empty inside. Um, looking to the left now and looking at the palette uh, and the brush. Well, the palette, uh, as the name says, is for color selection and color settings. Underneath the palette itself, we have the tool for uh, adjusting or controlling the colors, and it's in H, S, B, as in hue, saturation, and value. So hue is, well, it is a green, it is a red, it is an orange, it is a blue, it is a magenta, you know, so you can choose the hue that way. Uh, and saturation means, it, is it like a vivid green or a pale green, right? So is it muted or is it uh, strong and vivid? And the value is for darkness. So like a, a high value means that it's more bright. 
so it's closer to white so less dark uh, and a lower value means that it's very dark all the way down to a black um, type of color and underneath here we also have we have the numbers for each channel we also have the option to change that to a hex code uh, looking at the brush uh, if I click on all I can see all of the options once again and um, these kind of these three uh, areas here I would say the ones with the icons and the attached erase band paint and these down here they kind of work together um, what we do uh, most of the time and especially if I'm just beginning is to start with attach so you can attach voxels to the scene and you can attach single voxels you can attach uh, by face so you can click on a face of a model and then extrude uh, the face um, you can attach by single voxels you can create lines diagonal horizontal vertical lines uh, you can also attach shaders which is a uh, parametric modeling uh, these are like pre-made uh, models that you can add and adjust parametrically uh, by adjusting the parameters and also you can uh, attach patterns as well um, a lot of the work that we do it's actually within the voxel and the the face mode which extrudes uh, the models um, similarly we erase so we erase we erase voxels we erase faces we erase uh, patterns and so as I said, they kind of work together. And paint is for adding color to the models. So you can paint voxels again, you can paint the whole face. So whatever the color you have selected in your palette, it's used to paint. Um, underneath here, we have other tools. We have a transform tool, which is for moving, scaling, rotating. Uh, this works in conjunction to what we see down here. So we have the standard moving tool. Uh, next, we have the uh, um, not only moving, but also scaling tool. Uh, uh, this one we use for creating uh, repetitions, like a repeated grid. And this is a rotation tool. Um, we have selection next, so we use that to select, and we have options as far as the selection or the way we select, a marquee selection, a brush selection, or a um, box selection. We also have a magic wand, which is for selecting like, oh, are we going to select like a big uh, area, let's say a whole model, and it could select based on the color, so it looks at the same uh, color surrounding the place you click and selects uh, the area uh, but it also selects by uh, it has the option to select by connected region so it's going to look at the model and see like the the more closely connected voxels and select that uh, we also have a uh, a voxel color uh, we have uh, an option to remove uh, regions and we have a paint bucket as well now looking at the main area um, one thing to to think about is uh, navigation how to navigate or orbit around uh, the work area we can do it by using this gizmo at the bottom right so that's quite useful I am using a trackpad and on my trackpad uh, what I do is I use my two fingers my index and middle finger at the same time and then I just uh, uh, click and hold and then move my fingers around the trackpad to move this uh, if I want to uh, let's say um, pan the camera uh, what I do is I hold the space bar on my keyboard and then I do a single click. Now, if you are using a two button mouse or a three button mouse, those are different. So what I recommend is to look at the, at the Magic of Oxo documentation. It has that um, 
publish there uh, very uh, easily as well. Um, so we spoke about the, the size of the work area. Uh, we have some other interesting things here. Right next to it, to the left, we have this kind of uh, more interactive way to create a perhaps a uh, larger uh, work area. So if I click on those the arms of the arrows, I can um, create a larger work area. If I work on the arrow itself, I can basically just move it. And every time I'm asking it to do a movement or a change, uh, I press the uh, return or enter to commit to that change. So this is a little bit more interactive. Uh, the second, to the right of the numbers, um, I have the option to fit model size, and this will make more sense once we have a model. And I have the world view. And the world view is also very useful uh, because what it allows us to do, it, it's actually to work with several, um, let's say, bits and pieces, several different models and scenes and then basically to have something that overall it's gonna be more uh, complex looking. Um, and this is a wonderful way of, let's say, creative scene uh, of a city or a complex uh, landscape. And I, by hitting the plus and the minus signs, uh, I can add or delete more scenes to it. Uh, the shortcut for this view is tab. So if I press, uh, press tab again, I'm back into the single solo work area. So we're looking at this uh, through the lenses of a camera. It's a perspective camera, which means that it has a vanishing point. Uh, I have camera options down here, down underneath. Uh, so you see that I have perspective selected. I can show that I, I, we can change that to a freestyle camera, a orthographic camera, um, isometric camera. Uh, I also have this button that basically centers the work area to my uh, view. Uh, the next button is for adding this uh, the camera ruler. So it's a way of uh, positioning the camera using uh, a slider for horizontal uh, and vertical um, um, I think I have to go back to perspective. Here it is. Adjusting it uh, horizontally and vertically, like the rotating, tilting the camera. And uh, I also have the show view cube um, that basically turns my um, the visit. It shows or it hides this. Um, cube gizmo at the bottom uh, right of the work area. I can take a, a snapshot or a screenshot of my work, and it creates a PNG, and it adds it to the export folder in my uh, Magica Voxel folder. Um, I also have the option for creating or saving uh, different cameras in there. And if I um, look at this, I also have more like fine control over the cameras themselves. Just the, I guess, two last things. Um, I'm going to add some lips to this and then go to render. Uh, the render tab uh, is the, the next step. Let's say if you created a model, you want to see, you want to render it so you can actually visualize it, maybe publish it online. Uh, print it, send it to somebody. So a render, it's like a, a camera visualization of your model. Uh, and it adds uh, things like uh, really realistic shadows and lights uh, to it. Um, it also comes with a lot of different settings. And uh, Magica Voxel has a pretty neat, I would say, uh, render engine uh, and very simple. And we are basically uh, adjusting two main things here, the way the lighting is and uh, also the materials on the scenes and then the shadings on the scene 
um, in terms of being um, reflective as a metal or being dull uh, as a standard material or having something that emits light or that uh, basically is transparent like glass or even like a, a gas-like, uh, like a cloud. So those are the basic materials. We also have the option to visualize edges in here so we can see like uh, dark lines surrounding the object. We can look at the, uh, the floor as having uh, a grid. But we, all, we can also see the background back there uh, and give it a, uh, let's say, a different color. Right? So it kind of creates a, a sky. But there is a, a few more things to, to the render itself. I just wanted to, to mention uh, that is the render tab, which is for basically, like I said, visualizing it, uh, having like a photorealistic visualization. Uh, right here would be the size of the render. And this is the number of samples for uh, render quality. So if you get uh, grainy images, you can um, play around with the, the number of samples per pixel to actually adjust so it has less grains to it. Uh, finally, I just wanted to point out under project, we have the export panel, which is for exporting the models to uh, other platforms and maybe doing some um, interesting Unity uh, integration or bringing it to Blender um, or doing some amazing uh, web VR. And one important one, of course, it's the OBJ format. So we're going to be using it uh, in other uh, in later episodes as well. Okay, so this is my uh, overview of the Magic of Voxel interface. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'll see you on the next one.